Thank you for joining me again for video number two. If you missed video number one, you can watch this on the previous recording. All of these recordings are able to be accessed on the YouTube channel, the Kane County 4-H YouTube channel. Today you'll be receiving code number two for your student's tracking sheet, and we'll be introducing a different nutrition topic. Last time we talked all about MyPlate, which is the USDA's um, tool to help your students and to help you make healthy choices when you're eating meals at your home and making healthy choices. Today we're going to be talking about a different tool that the USDA um, offers information on to help you to understand the food that you're putting into your body and the food that you're serving to your children. This tool is very useful in understanding the food and the ingredients that are in the food that you're eating. Today we're going to be talking all about the Nutrition Facts label, and hopefully you're semi-familiar with this. Um, this is the original label that you've probably seen on the food that you've purchased in the past, and the USDA has recently updated the Nutrition Facts label to this new label, and it's required by law for this information to be updated by July 2021. So most food that you buy at the grocery store contains this new food label. You'll notice that there's a lot of similarities and a few differences. You'll notice there's some bold lettering in these new, this new format that helps some of the information be a little bit easier to see. You see the calories are a little bit larger. We also see um, the vitamin content and um, some differences in here. There's also another really useful um, update on this new format, and it is this total sugars right here. Our previous um, food label just listed all of the sugars, and with this updated version, you're able to see um, out of the carbohydrates that you're eating, which of them is the, the added sugar that is added into the product, which we'll talk about shortly. So I would just like to briefly touch base on these different um, parts of the Nutrition Facts label and to help give you more information on knowing what is a healthy choice and how to make sense of all these numbers. It seems a little overwhelming when you're just glancing at the food label, but with a few simple tricks and explanations, this food label will make absolute sense to you and you'll be able to use it to make healthier choices when you're at the grocery store and when you're making recipes. Making few simple swaps and changes can make a less healthy recipe much healthier and provide your body with more nutrients to make your body strong and develop properly. So you'll notice up at the top that there, the first thing listed is the serving size. And that serving size is what all this information is based on. Most of the time when you buy packages at the store, there's, there's usually anywhere from two to eight servings. Of course, it does, it, um, it matters what size of packaging you're having. But this is an important tool to remember because all of this information, the total fat, the calories, the sodium, the carbs, the sugar, everything is based on one serving. So if your food, um, your container has four servings and you eat the whole container, all of these numbers would be doubled. So if you have 100 um, grams of fat, you end up having 400 grams of fat. And the same with sodium and the vitamins, everything is times by four. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your um, serving size. That's a really important one. This is also really useful when you're thinking about making better portion choices. Having, like we talked about last time, having too much of any food isn't good for you. The serving size is crucial to eating healthy. Very important to have foods in moderation, whether they're healthy or are less healthy food options. Keeping that serving size in mind and eating the proper portion is a great way to keep your body healthy and avoid eating too many calories, which, which leads to obesity and certain types of chronic diseases over your lifetime. The next one we'll talk about here is the calorie intake. Now the amount of calories that your body needs to function properly is different from your siblings or your parents or your children, of course. This number is very specific to your body and how tall and how much you weigh, how much you wanna lose. A lot of different factors go into the calorie intake. Now all of this information is based on a 2,000 calorie a day intake. And this is general, um, uh, just what everything's based off of, but it's not necessarily how many calories you should be intaking. 
A good way that you can calculate this, obviously, if you reach out to a dietitian or to a doctor, they can give you specifics, but there's also really useful calculators you can find online that are free. If you just Google a calorie counter, you can just put in your weight and your goal if you're wanting to gain weight or lose weight or maintain the same body weight. This can help calculate a really, um, a really specific amount that will be what your body needs so that you can apply all this other information to your specific needs. So again, all of this information is based on a 2,000 calorie per day diet. Next, we see the total fats. And I think there's a common misconception that goes along with fats and carbs, which we'll talk about in a minute. But fats are essential for your body. You have to have fats for your brain to function properly. Obviously, too much fat isn't good for you, and that's what leads to our type 2 diabetes. It leads to obesity, chronic diseases that can be high blood pressure, heart disease, all of these unhealthy things that typically come from um, too much fat can lead to these unhealthy, these unhealthy chronic diseases, but having the right amount is essential for proper functioning. So understanding the different types of fat can help you to make healthier fat, fat intake choices and avoid those less healthy options. Our first one listed here and on the food label is saturated fat. Then we have trans fat, polyunsaturated fat, and monounsaturated fat. These two at the bottom are your healthier, heart-healthy fats, and these typically come from plant sources like olive oil or canola oil. They're both healthy for your body, and you're wanting to get enough fat, like we talked about, for your body to function properly. Ideally, you should be getting most of your daily fat intake from these sources, these unsaturated sources. These types of fats are typically liquid at room temperature, which is a great way to distinguish which is our healthier fats. So for instance, if you have olive oil on the tape on the counter and you have butter on the counter, obviously olive oil is your healthier choice. It's liquid at room temperature and it would fall into these categories, the unsaturated fats. Um, our next option right here at the top is our saturated fat and that's where butter fits. These are our less healthy um, fat choices and they come from, from lard, they come from butter, a lot of our animal sources and the, the fat that is in, in a lot of our meat products are, fall under this category. So our saturated fat, again, is fine to consume in moderation. We want to try to not have too much of this type of fat, but it's okay to have some of it. It's not awful for your body unless it's too many, um, too much percentage, then obviously that's not gonna cause a lot of benefit for your body. The next listed here is trans fat, and this is our, our fat we don't want any of. I tell the elementary students this is like our swear word in nutrition. We don't want any trans fat in our diet. What trans fat is, is it is a byproduct of hydrogenated oils. So it's not natural for your body. Your body doesn't recognize it as anything natural and so it leads to a lot of health complications. The FDA has actually come out and banned trans fat and I believe it was in 20 in, in 2020 when this, when this went into effect. So we don't see this typically, or you should see zero grams in, in the food products that you're buying, but sometimes down in the ingredient list, if you see hydrogenated oil, then that is an indicator of trans fat. And the reason that they can put zero here and have some down here is you have to have a certain amount of grams for it to count percentage wise. So if you have a really small amount of trans fat, they can sneak that down here really sneakily without having to add it up here because it's not meeting that requirement for a certain percentage of the food. So you really want to limit your saturated fats Focus on these unsaturated fats, those are our good ones, and then trans fat, our swear word fat. We wanna avoid that at all costs. Okay, next on the list is cholesterol, and currently the USDA doesn't have a recommended amount of cholesterol. Having some is important. It's important for your body to function properly and for your cell wall and membrane function inside your body, but you don't need very much of this. Too much of this leads to our many heart issues. So having some cholesterol, perfectly fine. Trying not to have too much of it is, is a good rule of thumb. 
And based on all of this information, a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is the five to 20 rule. What this means is anything that's less than 5% is considered a low percentage and anything above 20 is a high percentage. So foods like cholesterol, foods like fat, you're wanting to see these percentages to be less than five. Again, this isn't always always the truth, but this is a really good just overall thinking of percentages right here. Under five means it's low and above 20 means it's high. So if you have a food with 26% of saturated fat, that would be considered a high fat food. If it has over 20% of fiber or of, let's see, yeah, fiber or protein, then that would be a great food, right? It would be considered a high fiber, high protein food. So that would be a good healthy choice. So keep that in mind with these percentages and that applies to all of these different topics discussed on the food label. Um, next, oh, again, in here with cholesterol, we have sodium, we have potassium. Sodium, you want to keep low. It's recommended that you intake 2,300 2, milligrams, which is equivalent to about a teaspoon. Obviously, most Americans take intake way more than a teaspoon a day. Too much sodium isn't good for your body, but again, moderation is what we're leaning to in all the realms of nutrition. Moderation in all things. Uh, the, the carbohydrate section is what we see next on our food label. And carbs typically get a bad rap. I'm sure you've heard, stay away from carbs, eat less carbs. Obviously not too many carbs, but carbs actually give our body a lot of fuel, a lot of energy. That's what food is typically in the grain group that we talked about on my plate last time. So it is an essential group and it is important for your body to have them in moderation. And again, all of this information is, is the recommendations from the USDA. Um, in, this, in this breakdown, we see dietary fiber, which is important for your body to function properly. This is what helps you stay regular. We talk in elementary about your intestine being kind of like a water slide with lots of curves in it. And as you eat food, some things get wedged into the nooks and crannies of your intestine. So this dietary fiber is, fought, is, is a carb that your body can't digest. So as you eat your product with the fiber in it, it goes through and your body digests most of that food, but the fiber isn't digested. It goes through the nooks and crannies of your intestine and in one end and out the other. And along with that pushes out all of those foods and all of those things that have been built up in your body. So this helps you to have um, more enjoyable stools, passing them more easily, and being more regular, which is important because constipation is not a comfortable problem to deal with, and it also can lead to a lot of, of chronic diseases and unhealthy things. Even some types of cancers can come from this. So having high fiber intake is great for your body. It also helps you to stay full longer so you're not hungry and eating too many calories. Sugar also falls in this category. Grain food does have sugar. There are different types of sugar. There's natural sugar like lactose in milk and fructose in fruit. And then there's the added sugar. And this would be sugar that's added into a product. So like cakes and cookies, they have grain in them, but they also have a lot of added sugar. So this added sugar you're wanting to keep at a lower amount. Again, our updated nutrition facts label has a separate line for for the added sugar. And so you can see the differential breakdown from the sugar that's naturally found in the product and then the sugar that's added into the product during processing. So avoid those added sugars when possible. Protein is an important one to help your muscles and all of your body function properly. For all of your body systems, you need amino acids for them to function properly. That, that includes your hair to grow, your nails, all of your body has to have protein to function properly. So getting the, an adequate amount of protein is super important. And we talked in our last class about having five ounces, remember the hand gesture like a fish, five ounces is ideal, which isn't a lot. You're wanting your plate to have just a corner about the size of your palm of a protein food. So you're not needing to have too much of this. Too much can lead to unhealthy, unhealthy habits as well. And this bottom part, these bottom two ones are pretty self-explanatory. Your vitamin content and your ingredients are listed down below. And your ingredient list is really important to keep track of too. It's always listed from the most 
um, the most ingredients to the least. So if your first ingredient listed on the ingredient list is um, sugar, then that means that that product is mostly made of sugar. So you're wanting to see whole grains at the top of your list and sugar more towards the bottom. Your code word for today, before I forget, is label, L-A-B-E-L. Remember, if you didn't get the code word for your previous video, you can see this in um, our other video that is up or is posted right before this one and you'll get your first code word in that video. Hopefully your children are still excited about this program and it's getting your family active. Um, good luck and I'm hoping that we're gonna have some good outcomes with, with this project. Try applying this information that you've learned about food labels next time you go grocery shopping or when you're cooking at home. Hopefully there were a few takeaways. Remember the most important one would be our five to 20 rule. This is a really simple and easy one to keep in mind. I know this was a lot of information, but if the percentages on your food labels over here, if it's below five, then that's considered a low option. If it's above 20, it's a high option. So try to keep those healthy things like protein and vitamins above and getting our lower ones, oh, and fiber, and keeping our, our lower options below five like our fats and sugar. And again, all things in moderation. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to join me today. And I'll see you next week with our final code word of our competition.